Welcome to our Minute Science Playlist. Here we condense and simplify for the sake of time. If you're looking for more drawn out, in-depth analyses, check out our Crash Course Playlist here. In this video, we're gonna talk about vertical alignment. If you haven't yet seen my IPS vs OLED video, I invite you to watch that before diving into this topic. It'll just help make things a bit more clear. In a nutshell, the distinction between OLED and LCD resides in its light source. OLED panels use organic diodes to generate their own light, while liquid crystal displays utilize an LED or CFL backlight source, more commonly the former today. Pros and cons are discussed in the Crash Course video. Vertical alignment, or VA technology, is very similar in architecture to IPS or interplane switching technology. When current is passed through a pixel, liquid crystals react by rotating 90 degrees in the vertical, in the case of VA, hence the name, or untwisting in the case of IPS. This is thanks to tiny pairs of electrodes that share the same plane. Liquid crystals and IPS pixels are always parallel to the glass substrate, this is what differentiates IPS from TN, but untwist still by varying degrees with respect to distance from the dual electrode apex. By contrast, LCs and VA pixels rotate perpendicular to the glass substrate, hence the name. As a result, more or less light from the backlight underneath is allowed to pass through said pixel with varying degrees of applied voltage. Color filters alter backlight wavelengths for various RGB shades, and polarizers straighten out the rays. But what does this mean for the average consumer? Which should you look for in your next display? We'll start with budget first. VA panels are often offered as cheaper IPS alternatives, much in the same way that TN or Twisted Pneumatic is marketed. But if you ask me, VA offers a much cleaner look than TN, I think most would agree here, especially at sharp angles, and the refresh rate advantages of TN are no longer very relevant. Plenty of VA panels are currently offered at up to and exceeding 120 hertz. So VA panels will be cheaper than IPS, but generally a bit more expensive than TN panels. But what about the visual trade-offs? For one, viewing angles. IPS technology is still the superior technology in this category, and that's why it's great for large living rooms and even ultra-wide monitors. VA panels aren't bad, but IPS screens are still noticeably better. We're talking nearly 180 degrees of undistorted coloration. Another advantage of IPS technology is color reproduction. This is a category to which content creators should pay special attention. These panels will often very closely mimic the sRGB gamut, not to say that VA panels don't have excellent color reproduction, but IPS screens are typically a bit better. The last perk of IPS, response times. Since crystals in these displays need only pivot horizontally by varying degrees, they can react quickly to sudden stark voltage shifts. In most cases, gray-to-gray -gray testing reveals slight ghosting in VA panels, whose crystals must rotate a sum of 90 degrees, which is a bit more distance to cover in total than the liquid crystals in IPS technology. When choosing VA for a gaming panel, try to find one with around 5 millis seconds of response time or lower. On the contrary, very few IPS counterparts will be higher than 5 milliseconds, so you should be fine in this department. Not all is bad for VA though, there are actually a few noteworthy advantages of choosing vertical alignment over IPS, one of which being contrast ratios. They can be anywhere from 2 to 3 times higher than IPS thanks to crystal arrangements when in the off position, blocking more light from the source underneath. Black uniformity is also superior on VA panels. IPS panels generally exhibit more bleed around corners and even in splotch is near their centers. Look, no monitor is perfect. There will always be some sort of trade-off. Yes, OLED also falls into this category, uh, but it's great that we have these different technologies to choose from. Competition is a good thing. It encourages innovation. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Click subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.